I guess we're saving water too. into Bird Bay, which is approximately 15 miles southeast of Wrangell. Here's Wrangell, and we're going up around the north end of Wrangell Island, down Eastern Passage, through this little channel, and onto Bird Bay. We are headed into Bird Bay today. There's a couple rocks to avoid little high spot. You can enter into Berg Bay on either side of these little islands as I'm indicating in the video. We are in Berg Bay outside of Wrangell. There's a forest service cabin, cabin over there. I believe this is going to shoal up to probably the beginning of that rock there. And today is June 14th, and on June 15th, crabbing opens. Once crabbing opens in southeast, it's a lot harder to anchor in some of the bays. Distance happy. Right, Distant? Eric's hosing everything up. It took him a little longer than he would have liked to anchor here. This area is rich in recreational opportunities. Fishing for pink and silver salmon is popular in season, and crab is available due to the proximity of the tide flats. Hunters use the cabin as a base camp when seasons open for moose, goats, waterfowl, brown, and black bear. Not bad for a June day in Southeast Alaska. And we've just been joined by the Tenacious. And here comes a fishing boat. Eric said it was in Wrangell. It's the Sea, the sea Queen. The sea queen. Yep, it's the Sea Queen. He was right. So they have numbers on their boat and I think on their crab pot too. And that barge has got a number. So we think that's his barge. And Eric says he's going to tie up to it. Yep, there goes the fender. So I would guess it would be safe to anchor in that area. Yep. Yeah, if it doesn't blow. That's a lot of crab pots. The fishermen in Alaska work hard. It is seven o'clock at night. Look how beautiful a night it became. Gorgeous. We have the screens up because there's no seams out. This crabbing boat knows exactly where to be. Woke up in the middle of the night and trying to figure out what's going on over here. night though. 
at 2.30 last night. This was here and there was a boat. A lot of crows. I saw a boat out there just a minute ago. Oh, there it is. Distance getting a little love today. She gets a little love every morning. So the sea queen is back. And today's the opening, so I'm... Eric's getting the dinghy ready. They're loading the crab pots onto the boat. They've loaded up the boat and now they're just dropping the pots off. Notice how they make sure that the rope goes out in a line. You don't want to throw the rope down in a big bunch because you might get it knotted and it might just go down and take the buoy down. You'll never find your crab pot again. If you want to know how I know this, we've done it. There went $500 crab pot. I hope they leave a little path for us to get out. There's another one. Busy place. Now we've got a couple landing crafts coming. I think they're going up and doing some maintenance on the cabin. I don't quite have this figured out. This showed up last night and it appears to be a house. I don't know how it got here, but it's tied to the float and then they tie their boat to the, to the float house. Looks comfortable. I'm on the boat deck because we have the dinghy down below. So that leaves all this space for us to sit on the sun. Thank goodness I have a Kindle. I've got like 10 books that I've been reading for the past three weeks. We have another boat coming. The different boats are starting to come in and settle for the evening. We are getting even lower on food. So tonight I baked hamburger buns. I think they turn out pretty good, but may not need a, them to be that big. And we can hamburgers. I made a cherry pie bake. This recipe is a keeper for the boat. All the ingredients are easy to store. Look how low the tide gets to that float. So I guess the float's over on the right hand side and the float house that's been hooked up to it is on the left with a boat. But everything's still floating. Here's one of the lower tides, and as you can see, the commercial boat's barge is still floating. And the Forest Service float is still floating. Well, we have another boat coming in. It's a Katie Krogan, and it looks like they're going to look for a place to anchor. Maybe I'll have to take off my pajamas. Well, we got off the boat and we went out to explore. How many feet is it? 22. 22? That is quite a house that floats. The Berg Bay Cabin was constructed in 1965 by Wally Watts, Alfred Ogland, and Chuck Jenkins Sr. Eric's down there doing something to keep the boat from floating away, I hope. And this is the Forest Service cabin. There's a nice little fire pit and a place to grill food. I have my trusty bear spray and my fly swatter. Right now I'm thinking the fly swatter is more important. 
he has discovered that there are lines to tie the boat up to. There's Distin trying to find as much grass as she can so she can throw up later. So this big green stuff is skunk cabbage. And it really does smell like skunk. I didn't know what skunk smelt like until much later in life. But it smells just like the cabbage. This really is a nice little cabin. Um, you can go onto the Forest Service um, app and reserve it. My understanding is whoever reserves the cabin also gets the float. We have a short bed here. I think a longer bed here. Dining table. So what's up in upstairs? It's a loft, sleeping place. Probably the best place the cabin to sleep. So we even have a map. And we're here, but there's another one down here at Martin Lake. There's also a Virginia Lake cabin. Help or keep our wildlife wild. Human foods and food odors attract wildlife such as bears. Help prevent bears and other wildlife from learning that human food or garbage is an easy meal. The bear-proof container that we provided will prevent bears from having access to human foods. Please store the food in the bear-proof container and keep a clean camp. Here's the food container that they leave to be bear-proof. No wood stove, it's only oil. I think there's like maybe two or three cabins in all of the ponds. National forests that have actual wood stoves in them. They're on the Cross Admiralty uh, canoe trail. It's nicer to have wood and oil. You don't have the stink and the... Well, we're going to explore the trail just a little bit. There is a board rock going to the outhouse. And then all the way up to Berg Creek, which is four miles away. My understanding from people that we met in Wrangell is they've been up here several times and they have seen bear scat, but have not actually run into bears. But it is advised that you are very bear beware if you're up here. Personally, I'm okay with the bear spray. But I'll feel a lot better about this stuff when uh, Eric has a, a gun. This one's not on a leash, which is not normal for her. But Eric says we won't go far. Hikers will find a trail that takes off from the cabin and travels through the grass flats. The trail is well maintained for the first 2.5 miles and maintained in a passable condition for the next 1.5 miles. The trail becomes quite difficult when it takes a turn up Aaron Creek, where it travels another four miles to the Berg Basin. Because of its overgrown and steep nature, this last section of the hike should only be attempted by very hardy individuals. The trail from the cabin to Berg Mountain was originally contracted as a mining access trail in the early 1900s. Another trail connecting the cabin to the Tide Flats was built by Gordy Edgers and his Forest Service crew in 1966. The trail was originally planked in the mid-1970s. In 1989, the Four Mile Trail was replanked. The Wrangell Teachers Association was vital in providing volunteer labor to lay the new planks. The United States Forest Service helped guide them in their efforts and provided the materials. The Clinkets settled in the mouth of the Stikine, the Great River as they aptly called it, and along the shores of the mainland and many islands of southeast Alaska. The Clinkets thrived on the bounty of the land. Besides a healthy supply of fish and game, there were blueberries, salmon berries, huckleberries, thimbleberries, strawberries, blackberries, crowberries, and lowbush cranberries in season. 
With the great profusion of these natural resources, Clinkets did not need to cultivate crops or raise stock. Oh, these are wild strawberries, aren't they? I bet you anything they are. Blueberry bushes. Look at how dense it is. I mean, can you imagine trying to get off trail and go someplace? Here, it's not quite as dense right here. Can you imagine going through that? How do you do that when you deer hunt? It's usually in the fall, so you don't have all the blueberry bushes, leaves on the blueberry bushes, but it's usually difficult. Yep. Even that is difficult. Nice cabin, except for the oil heat. Idle time. You can see the crabbing boat moving around and pulling its pots. We heard there was some fun dinghy rides in the tide flats on the bay next door. We didn't go up there, but we did go check out the bay. Place of crab. Wonder what the shrimpians like here. So the same thing that the crab must eat, the salmon must eat. So here are our tracks from the two times that we've stayed at Berg Bay. The green tracks are the first time that we stayed, and the blue this time. We held good. Right now it is about mid-tide and we are at about 35 feet of water. And here's an aerial view of Burt Bay where we were anchored at about mid-tide just to give you an idea of what it looked like as the tide starts going out. Eric's pulling anchor. Distin just got a bath. She's shivering a little. What do you have on the anchor? 
But, but not a whole bunch. I mean, not a whole bunch? No, there, there was nothing on the chain, which... He pulled up a lot of his crab pots, so I'm guessing that he wasn't catching much crab in here and he went to set them somewhere else. And by Bird Bay. For now, we're off to explore someplace else. What a great day. Have a see you next time.